Hey everyone, Mandy and Mike here. So this is part two of the 2020 Big Nail Big Black Modified Car Build, also known as... You didn't prep me on this. What am I supposed to all Jenny! Say her name oh. is Jenny! We <laughs> gave her a name! This is Jenny. <laughs> so part two on the build of Jenny. So... I gotta tell you, this is the first race car I've ever named. I'm excited, I know. It's, you know, just new things every day, honey. Yep, it's all we're hard. growing. Yes. So, Mike, you wanna kinda tell them what we're gonna dive into a little bit? Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the first things that I installed on the car before now, and then we're, after that, we're gonna install the bell housing and the transmission. Awesome sauce. All right, check it out. So one of the first things we installed on the car was the steering box because uh, I had a fresh one that just came back from GME, so I uh, figured it's fresh, so let's put it in. Um, there are different, if you're running a half box, there are different brackets uh, for the right side depending on whether you have a GME box or a profile box or uh, if you have a sweet box or whatever. Um, make sure you got a, a clamp bracket on the left side. Um, if you have a full box, make sure that you get the floating bracket so that um, that helps uh, the wear and tear on the housing so that it doesn't crack. Um, so I looked at my other cars and put everything in the same holes so this this box should be in the same position as all my other cars. The next thing that I installed was the motor plate and I didn't have <laughs> the right hardware yet. Um, we're going to order some through Napa, but I just stuck some bolts in there to get it on there for now so I can get the brake pedal going. Next, after we installed the motor plate, we bolt the pedal up to the motor plate. Uh, I like to take this bolt out and put grease on it because this is, this is acting as a hinge. Uh, this is a stop bolt so that it doesn't clamp this bracket too tight and pinch the brake pedal, which would make it have a drag on it and it wouldn't return back and your brakes would drag and wouldn't function properly. Next, I installed the brake balance bar with the master cylinders. This one came assembled from Bicknell. Uh, some of them come unassembled. Uh, there's very detailed instructions on the length of the rods and the height between the two rods and getting that correct. Uh, if it's not, your brake balance is gonna be all out of whack. So, and they won't function properly and they'll probably wear out quicker. So. Uh, I would follow the instructions the best you can. And when you install the radius rod between the brake balance bar and the pedal, make sure you put never sees on the threads. That makes it easier to adjust in and out. I like to adjust this pedal all the way out when I bleed the brakes. That way the pedal doesn't come down and hit the firewall or some of your bulkhead fittings that would be here for the power steering when you're bleeding the brakes. That way you get a full throw, the brakes bleed a little quicker, and then once you're done bleeding the brakes, you can adjust the pedal to a comfortable height uh, for where you, when you're sitting in the seat. I also went through and double checked all of the brake connection. Even though these brake lines were installed from the factory, I wanted to make sure that every fitting was tight. Um, if you're installing these yourself, make sure that you use uh, pipe dope when you put the the uh, pipe fittings into like your brake shut off and other places. And um, I also will like the threads on these aluminum fittings, I'll put a little bit of grease, like just a tiny dab so that any corrosion or whatever, when you go to take one apart someday, uh, it doesn't ruin the threads when you go to take it off. 
I like to steer with my left hand and uh, this is a very comfortable spot for me to adjust my right front brake shut off. So that's why I've got it up high here where I can reach it. The throttle rod came installed in the car, but I took it back out and put grease inside where it runs on the frame. That way it's not squeaking and whatever, and it's and you've got a nice smooth operation for your throttle pedal. Make sure that when you put it back in that you put the washer on the outside before you put the cotter pin in. And I like to bend the cotter pin all the way around and cut the, cut the ends off. So I picked up this bell housing from Burt and uh, we had this transmission as a spare in the trailer last year. So we're gonna install this in the car next. Couple things you'll need. I'll use two 5 8 bolts to align where the dowels go through the motor plate and align where the, um, where the engine would then go through it. If you use these to line this up when you put it in instead of just using the, the bolts, when you go to install the engine, it'll go in, it'll fall in a lot smoother. So um, I'll use long eight bolts so that the shank of the bolt is uh, acting as the dowel pin of, from the engine going through there. Put that in, this top bolt and the two bottom bolts are threaded into the motor plate. And uh, I'm gonna put never seize on the threads because they're going into aluminum before we install it. I like the glue stick style. The, you can get it from Napa. It goes on the threads nice and easy and you don't get it all over your hands. So like I said, you want to you want to have these bolts, these five eighths bolts pushed in all the way, so that they slide in and out freely, and that's going to make it so that your engine goes in and out freely when you go to install it. These lower bolts, I again put never seize on them because they're threaded into aluminum, and because I'm using never seize and not Loctite, I'll use a lock washer to keep them from falling out. So you can see the lower two bolts are about just right in length. Uh, if these stuck through. A quarter inch or so that would be fine too um, but nice as nice and flush is what you're looking for but they aren't gonna hit the oil pan or anything uh, if they stick out a tiny bit down here but this top one you can see I'm just a little bit long and that is an issue uh, some engine blocks when you put them in could hit that and it would <laughs> completely mess you up because this it needs to sit nice and flush against this motor plate so it's very important that you either cut that bolt off or find a shorter one uh, you could also just stick a washer on the back side or a lock or you know if you already have a lock washer just add a washer and uh, get it so that it's nice and flush you do want to get it make sure that they're in far enough because you are threading into aluminum it's easy to strip those threads so Perfectly flush is where you want to end up. Sure. And our bolts go in and out, so we know that that'll work. So your idler gear is going to be pushed out by the starter and spinning mm -hmm. and then when it's when once the engine starts it to return back so you have this spring here with a washer and uh, this all needs to be lubed up really nice so that it functions properly uh, if you got an old one that you're installing or if it's already installed whatever you want to take this plate off take these three bolts out and clean that shaft and clean the gear, clean everything really nice so that it slides nice on there, and then grease it up and reinstall it. I know that the grease fitting on the back side of this is not the easiest to get to, but it's, it's, a, it's a good idea to use lightweight grease so that this is in and out freely. You don't want that getting stuck out and not returning back. So 
And then when you install these bolts again, you're threading into aluminum, so make sure you just never seize or you'll never get this bolt out of there. I highly recommend if you have a spare transmission that you're carrying around in your trailer, making a stand to put it on. Uh, this protects everything on it from getting wrecked from rolling around in the trailer. We've got a mount on the side to keep the clutch and the linkage uh, from getting, like a lot of people will pick this up and move it and if this was loose, they might set it on top of it or, or set it on top of one of the lines. You wanna keep this stuff zip tied up so that it doesn't get wrecked in the trailer. Uh, and a lot of times people, if they didn't have a stand, set the transmission down and kink the end of this line because this would hit the ground first because it's going to lean over on it. So when I'm setting this in, I want to make sure that it doesn't fall off of here. So I'll start with the, the easy one. This top left corner is studded on all the Burt bell housings. So I'll put a washer on there. This is a fine threaded nut. Now for your crew guys and everything, make sure that they know that the coarse threads go in the other three holes. And this one is fine. Um, the stud itself is still coarse going into the bell housing, but um, it's coarse on this end and fine on this end. So you need a fine nut there and three coarse bolts. Now when you're installing these bolts here, you wanna make sure that, again, you get enough thread into the bell housing so that you're not gonna strip those threads. This is either gonna be made out of aluminum or magnesium, so they can strip easily if you don't get enough uh, penetration or whatever you call it. I also like to have a bolt that has a little bit of shank, at least on the end, that's gonna help align the transmission as you put it in. If the threads are just slightly smaller in diameter, so that won't really hold it there. Uh, I also like to use one flat washer and a lock washer to keep the bolts from falling out. So right here you can see, I've kind of snugged this nut up and there's a little bit of a gap here. Right here, this spot, there's this tranny happened to be riding around the trailer and got dinged. So there's a little bit of a burr on it. The last thing you wanna do is just cram this down on there. I'm gonna take it back off, file it down flat before I tighten it up. So I'll run all the bolts in all four just snug and then tighten them down evenly. You don't wanna get one corner cranked down tight before you do the other corner. You could risk cracking the housing of the transmission. Next, I'm going to adjust the linkage, which on the Gen 2 Burtz is a remote linkage or up by your right hand. I'm gonna adjust where it is and where my clutch is just for, this is also just a driver comfort thing. So this Burt shifter comes where you can mount it way up here, you can mount it way back here. Uh, for me, I'm tall, so I got long arms and I can reach. So I like mine ahead. So there's three holes shown here. It's not all the way ahead, there's still one more hole, but I put a lot of grease on these tapered bolts because again they get corrosion on them and you can't get them out later when you want to so there's also two sets of holes for the clutch whether you want it, want to run that forward or back and you have the choice with the clutch whether you want to push it or you want to pull it um, I'm probably one of the weird ones that likes to pull it. Everybody else seems to want to push theirs. To me, 
it's easier this way because I actually take my thumb and my pointer finger and I just pull it like this. And then I'm not using my arm to pull the clutch when I'm driving. So for me, that's easier. Most people mount it this way. Now we're mounting onto aluminum again. So I gotta use Never Seize on the threads of the bolts. And these bolts need to be the correct length so that they just stick through this aluminum because they're gonna bottom out against the frame. And you pry that out and you could crack this bracket if they were the wrong length. We're also going to use a lock washer and a flat washer. The lock washer is going to keep these bolts from falling out. As we all know when people do nut bolt checks on the race car, they never do the cockpit, they only do the suspension. Jenny. She's been named. So. We've made a little more progress today on our new Jenny. chassis. I'm Jenny. I'm Jenny. <laughs> See? I'll get used to that. Jenny. <laughs> Anyways, continue. Um, another good tip on the way out is make sure that all these, this stuff is powder coated. So make sure you run a tap through all the threads and clean everything out. It makes everything fit a lot easier. Uh, Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If uh, you have any other ideas, or leave questions. them in the comments below. Questions, comments, anything. Concerns. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to like Mandy's videos and subscribe to the channel and the newsletter. And uh, we'll try to continue this as we get more parts for our car. Yeah. See you guys.